Hello, greetings. Uh, let's take a look at our third example from section 2.2.1 in the text on production planning. Uh, so this problem's a little longer, a little more involved, um, but uh, hopefully you find it fun and enjoyable. And even though the problem's longer, there's there's a little more to it as compared to the previous two examples. The solution strategy is still going to be exactly the same. The setup's still going to be exactly the same. Um, it's just the equations are longer. Um, in terms of solvability, since we're ultimately going to solve this on a computer, uh, that part really doesn't matter. Okay, so um, let's let's have some fun. Um, oh, and one more note. Remember, in this screencast, we're just going to set up our linear programming problem. Um, we'll numerically solve the problem in uh, additional videos using uh, Microsoft Excel, LibreOffice Calc, and um, hopefully MATLAB. Okay. So in preparation for the winter season, a clothing company is manufacturing parka and goose overcoats, insulated pants and gloves, um, insulated pants and gloves. All products are manufactured in four different departments, cutting, insulating, sewing, and packaging. The company has received firm orders for its products. The contract stipulates a penalty for undelivered items. Devise an optimal production plan for the company based on the following data. Okay, so um, how I'm looking at this data. Okay, so here we have four departments um, in which our products will be manufactured. We're given the time uh, in hours per unit um, required for production of a unit of each product in all four departments, right? Where are four products? So we think of this as product one, two, three, and four. Parkas, goose, um, parka, or overcoats, pants, and gloves. Um, this row uh, is labeled as the demand. Okay, I'll take the demand to be um, the number of, of items that have been ordered of each product type, then the unit profit per item delivered of each type, and then the unit penalty um, you know, for each unit undelivered of each type. Okay, um, cool. So let's set it up. Okay, so, you know, again, this is going to be you know, very similar to what we've done before. Okay, so if I start with my objective. Okay, my objective is to maximize my total profits. Okay, so what is my total profits? Okay, so Z, my total profits is going to be, well, uh, first I'm gonna have to sum over um, all of my product types and I'm going to sum up the um, product of the number of units of each type delivered times the profit per unit of each type delivered. Then I'm also going to have to subtract from that, um, you know, my penalty. Okay, so my penalty for undelivered items. So I'll subtract from that. Um, I'll sum over all um, product types, and it'll be the product of the um, number of units undelivered uh, times the penalty per unit of undelivered item. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to have uh, Z is, okay, so profit, oh, 30, and actually let me take one more step back just to get some variables, All right? So we're going to have X2, X3, and X4. Uh, this could be the number of units of um, delivered of product type 1, 2, 3, and 4, which in this case is parka, goose, pants, gloves, okay, so this is um, delivered, okay, then I'll use Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4 as being the number of parka, goose, pants, and gloves undelivered. Okay, so then getting back to writing down my profit expression, so Z will be equal to, okay, so my profit for uh, unit one is 30 um, times X1 plus 40 times X2 plus 20 X3 plus 10 x4 
Okay, then I need to subtract from that my penalty. So it'll be minus, okay, now I'm looking at this row, 15y1 minus 20y2 minus 10y3 minus 8y4. Cool. All right, so there's my objective. Okay, now I'm going to need some constraints. Okay, so um, yeah, it's in a constraint, um, something I can incorporate um, in, in a number of different ways is the number of delivered units and the number of undelivered units is going to be related. Okay, and so you know, demand again, okay, my interpretation of this row um, that's demand is the number of units of each type that have been ordered, okay. So when I look at, you know, the penalty for undelivered units, okay, the number of units undelivered should be equal to the number of units ordered minus the number delivered, okay. So we should have you know, we should be able to write relationships for our undelivered units. Okay. Ah, undelivered. Okay. We'll call it undelivered constraints. Right. Where y1 should be equal to the number of units of one ordered minus the number delivered. Okay. Likewise, y2 would be 750 minus um, x2. Y3 will be 600 minus X3, and Y4 will be 500 minus X4, okay? So it's, you know, not really a constraint. Um, it would just be essentially a definition of that variable, right? And I could take these four equations, and if I wanted to, I could plug them in here for Z, and that's just going to result in a longer, uh, nastier equation. Um, but when we do it on a computer, it's it's easy enough to um, to do that, right? So, yeah, I think what's important, right, to essentially state is that my variables, right, are going to be x1, x2, x3, and x4. That's what I'm solving for, right? In terms of y1, y2, y3, and y4, is once the values of x1, x2, x3, and x4 are are fixed, are known. Um, or once we, you know, specify those, then the values of y1, y2, y3, and y4 are also fixed, right? The values of our y's are dependent on x. Okay, so they're not really, you know, constraints. It's, um, you know, it's, they're fixed. Okay, but I'm going to list them under our constraint criteria um, here. Okay, so that's how we'll handle um, demand. Okay, then the other thing, the other easy one to write out because we'll have four of them is going to be um, our non-negativity constraint. Okay, and that's just we're dealing with, with um, you know, units of product. So x1, x2, x3, and x4 are all going to have to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, and you could also say the same thing um, with respect to y1, y2, y3, and, and y4. Um, and so, yeah, um, we don't need to write them for y1, y2, y3, and y4, um, but instead I would write it as x1, x2, and x3, and x4 need to be less than or equal to uh, the demand. Okay, so so what do I mean? So I know my non-negativity constraint is going to tell me that x1, x2, x3, and x4 all need to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and then further... I know that x1 has to be less than or equal to the demand for x1, which is 800. x2 has to be less than or equal to the demand for um, component 2, which is 750. Um, x3 has to be less than or equal to the demand for um, component 3, which is 600. And x4 has to be less than or equal to the demand for component 4, which is 500. Okay, now I could take these and I could combine them. So I could say um, x1's, uh, you know, x1's less than uh, 800 but greater than 0, right? So I could give a range of all values of, of x1. Um, that would make it a lot more compact. 
I'm going to keep them separate because Excel, um, you know, if I think about Excel or LibreOffice, um, I can only give constraints with a single um, logical operator. Okay, so I'm only looking at, you know, I'm trying to keep my expressions so they only have a, a single operator in there, uh, thinking about how I'll actually solve them. Uh, and in terms of greater than or equal to zero, um, that'll just check the box to uh, make sure all of my variables are non-negative, uh, which is equivalent to greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now this demand constraint uh, here uh, is important uh, because then this will make sure that my y1, my y values are all greater than zero. All right, so if x1 has to be between zero and 800, um, that'll make sure that you know y1 is greater than zero, and then same thing for y2, y3, and y4. All right, so I don't need a non-negativity constraint for y1 through y4 um, because this constraint due to my demand uh, will fix it. Okay, so this constraint of my demand will make sure my y's are um, all greater than zero, um, and then this relationship with my demand um, is necessary because that's just how my undelivered quantity is is defined okay amount ordered minus the amount um, produced okay all right then the last constraint that we'll have um, which we've had in all the other cases is going to be a capacity limitation constraint okay so if i know how many units of each product type i'm producing okay then i could determine um, the amount of time required in each department to make those units and then I need to make sure that that's going to be less than the total capacity of the department. Okay so if I were just to go over the next page okay you write this as say a, a capacity constraint um, okay and I'll have uh, one for each department um, so uh, Cutting, insulating, sewing, and packaging. So cutting, sewing, insulating, and packaging. Okay. And in all cases, we're going to take the form of um, the rate or the amount of time in hours per unit that's listed in the table. Um, you know, per each product type times the number of product types produced, and then I'm going to sum over all product types. All right, so I'll, you know, plug in the rate for component one or product one, uh, for product two, product three, product four, and that's going to have to be less than or equal to my total capacity of a thousand. Okay, and I would have one of these expressions or one of these constraints for each of our departments. Okay. It's going to write it down in general. I'll evaluate it or plug in the numbers for cutting just to make sure you know exactly what I mean. Um, but I won't spend all the time in the screencast copying those values from the table. Um, Cause that wouldn't be a good use of your time. Um, but then I'll make sure I finish filling everything in and, and get it set up for our next screencast in which we solve this using Excel. Okay, so for the case of cutting, okay, what I would need to essentially copy there um, would be, you know, the time uh, per uh, unit, so hours per unit uh, made um, for each product type. So 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.25, and 0.15. So, okay, so there's the um, uh, production rate or, um, you know, in hours per unit of each unit produced. And so the total, this gives us then the total time to make um, those units. And that has to be less than, you know, the 1000 hour capacity um, of that department. So I'd fill that in for um, all four departments. And then if I wanted to write out my, um, you know, problem, right, I could, you know, it'd be max. I'd write out my objective function, 
uh, my long objective function from the top, and that's going to be subject to uh, the constraints, and those constraints are going to be my capacity expressions here, okay, um, my non-negativity constraints, and then also I have my demand constraints, okay, here, while I have it listed under constraints, really isn't going to constraint, um, it's just a definition of, of why my undelivered units, um, and so, you know, what you really, you know, probably ought to do would be to substitute in these expressions for y1 through y4, uh, in for y1 through y4 in this equation, and then simplify, um, but I'm not going to go through the effort of substituting this in here and then simplifying, um, only because we're ultimately going to solve this on a computer, um, and so, you know, I can just have the computer do that. Um, me trying to work out the algebra would just, you know, potentially um, present opportunities to introduce um, mistakes. Okay, so I'll finish filling in the table, um, and then in uh, next screencast we'll solve this in Excel. Um, I'll point out where things are uh, filled in, and again, one more reminder, right, this isn't necessarily a constraint. These are, you know, definitions of, you know, how many of our units are undelivered. You should just substitute these into the objective function and simplify. I'm not going to do that, and you know, I wouldn't necessarily advocate for you to do that, um, only because we're going to solve it on a computer, and so we could just as well, um, you know, define those values there um, without going through the algebra and potentially introducing a mistake of our own. Okay. Um, besides, to me, uh, this is clear then in terms of exactly what this means. Hope that helps. Um, we'll see you in a few minutes.